There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. Figgy, come over here. No, come. Come here. Come on. Come. Your puppy Razor trained you so well. Come on. Oh, good boy. You lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Look, it looks like you. It says you're awesome, and it's a black leg. It's so cute. You guys are in the picture. Really hard to tell. I don't think you can see Picasso though, unless she like lays in my lays in my lap. Basic guide dog gear. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us again. I am Nicole. If you're new around here, and this is my guide dog Figaro. Hopefully you can see him. Hello. He's a very handsome black lab guide dog from Guide Dogs for the Blind. And over here, avoiding the camera, as usual, is Picasa, who's my retired guide dog. <sighs> She's been retired for a couple of years, and she knows it, so she doesn't do much of anything on command. <laughs> Just so you all know, we don't typically let them up on the bed, and this is technically a bed, but um, this is like basically my new studio slash craft room slash office, and I will be using it sometimes for filming. So. I did want to try to get them up here, and Figaro especially is really hard to keep on the bed. It's hard to get him up on the bed, and it's hard to keep him on the bed. He's pretty regimented about his rules. <laughs> Picasso, not so much. I wanted to take a little bit of time today to show you some of our basic guide dog gear, and I'll probably show you some extras, but some things that I love to have on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's jump into it and hope that my dogs stay up here. The key to your relationship is in the leash. The key is really in your reward pouch, which I forgot to talk about in this video, but we'll talk about soon. We have a nice long leather leash that was issued with Figaro from Guide Dogs for the Blind. They're really nice quality. They are thicker and they take a while to break in, so it depends on the kind of leash you like. I was with some puppy raisers this past weekend and they much prefer a thinner leather leash that allows them to really feel what their puppy is doing and any movements the puppy has. You'll see that there's an end clasp here. I don't remember what these are called. Are they like lobster clasps or something? So there's a clasp at the very... I'm going to straighten the whole thing out. Okay, so there's a clasp on this end. There's a little bit of braided leather and there's a ring right at that end as well. That is the ring that we will use to make a short leash. If you go all the way down the leash, there's another little braided piece right here, and there's another loop. That um, ring is used to make a long leash. And then if you go the remainder of the way down the leash, you've got another braided section, and you've got another lobster clasp. Rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> So your little clasp, your little uh, clip, lobster clasp, whatever it is, you take that and you'll click to the ring. So right now I've got a long leash. You'll see that it makes a ring for your hand to hold at the top, like a circle of leather. So that's your long leash. And that leaves, I don't know what, three feet. It's long enough to allow your dog some privacy as they relieve, let's say not long enough for them to really get in trouble. So you've got that length. And then if you're gonna make a short leash, which you would use if you're healing, so you're gonna clasp that leash toward the bottom, and then you have a short leash. So you see what that does is it makes like a really big circle. The leash is the primary tool, like really the most immediate tool between handler and guide dog in terms of the foundation of your relationship and the foundation of starting to work together. This bottom clasp is going to go onto your dog's collar. While we're at that, we'll talk about the collar. I'm going to take your collar off, Figgy. He probably doesn't care. Go away. So this is Figaro's collar. Figaro's collar is by the company Cetacea. I believe that these are specially made for guide dogs for the blind. So they may be a little bit different from what's available through their company and their offerings on their website. So Figaro's is black and has little like little blocks of green 
and yellow or gold. And this is kind of the standard issued Martingale collar through Guide Dogs for the Blind. The Martingale collar has these two loops here, has this chain between and a third loop. Now, when I want his leash and collar to be active, or I want to be able to communicate with him through the collar, I will hook the leash onto this moving or live loop. If I'm going to, let's say, put him on tie down, then you'll use one of these two rings that don't move, and those are called a dead ring. They're on both edges of the chain piece. And then the live piece, the live loop, is the one that moves with the chain. On Figaro's collar, on this um, additional loop, which is for your tags and that sort of thing, he has his Guide Dogs for the Blind identification number. One of these two is probably his rabies, and one of the two is probably his identifier for his microchip. This last thing is just a little light. It's an LED light that we got at Home Depot. It's nice for us in the evening, so it just clips on. It's got it's got a little lobster clasp also, a smaller one, and it clips on there with his um, tags. And it's nice because he's black, so when we let him out in the evening, um, nobody can see him, not just the blind handler. None of us can see him, so it's nice to have that light on him in the evening when we let him out to relieve for the last time before bed and we can kind of pay attention to where he is. The last little piece of his collar, I mean, there's some adjusters here. And then there's a clasp here. It's a plastic clasp and it just goes around his neck and you clasp it. Big, big. Okay, so I'm gonna put that on him. While we're talking about collars, I will talk a little bit about the head collar or the gentle leader. This is a tie-dye head collar that a good friend made for us. It's, oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. So his nose goes in. Beep, bop, boop. And here's the collar piece. It's gonna come around back behind his ears, clasp, click, and then there we go. This piece, I don't know if you can see it, this piece is going to clip to his leash, like so. This piece is going to clip to his regular collar on one of the dead rings, if I can find it. <laughs> there it is, okay. So that piece is clipped to his regular collar now. This piece is clipped to his leash. And what you'll see is that it basically just gives me more control over his head. Hi. Kind of like if you are a horse handler. I don't have a lot of experience with horses, but I'm told that this is very similar to how you work with horses. And so it gives me more control of his head. It does not hurt him. I communicate with him a little bit differently when he's using his head collar versus using his regular collar and his harness, but it's a great tool. It helps him to focus, especially if we are in an area of high distraction or something like a conference where it's super, super busy. But this is another one. This is a black one it's by a different company. It has a different structure around the nose and face area. It's just a different design. I do have a purple and a pink one. I used to have a red one, but I have no idea what I did with it. Picasso's interested because these were Megan's. Were these Maggie's? Yeah, these were Maggie's, weren't they? So here's the pink one. And then Maggie had a purple one also. And um, does this one have a, no, this one doesn't have a safety strap either. So that's the head collar or gentle leader. I have not personally worked with a Halty, but I know that a lot of schools have their dogs work with a brand called the Halty instead of a gentle leader. <laughs> okay, so the pups switched sides. <laughs> Figaro's over on my left, Picaz is over on my right, and this is Figaro's harness. Guide dogs for the blind. <laughs> It is on the nameplate on his harness that says Guide Dogs for the Blind. Figaro is through Guide Dogs for the Blind, which is an organization that is out of San Rafael, California. They also have a campus in Boring, Oregon. I have only attended the Oregon campus for training, but I've been to both campuses and I love them both. Every Guide Dog school and organization has a different harness. This is specific to Guide Dogs for the Blind. This is the body of his harness. This is leather. It is super flexible, as you can see here. Over the lifetime of the harness, 
it is also going to soften up. On the sides, there are reflective areas. So there's a stripe of reflective um, fabric here. There's a stripe of reflective fabric here. So on either side, these two structural pieces back here, those go kind of on his sides. And those are plastic. And then on the very front is stamped guide dogs for the blind and I think it's actually black also but I'm not sure this strap right here will go under his belly now this can be adjusted it's kind of like a belt on this underbelly area and you'll see that there's a metal like a belt what is that called <laughs> looks like a belt <laughs> there are some additional holes in the leather body of the harness on the underbelly and there is a belt buckle that's what it's called it's called belt buckle oh my goodness so that it can be adjusted if he gains or loses weight. So that's the body. This is the handle of the harness. You'll see that there's like white, basically white plastic. I don't know if that's actually plastic or if it's like PVC or what it is, but there's basically white plastic on the two sides. So it's lightweight or it's lightweight in comparison to some of the harnesses that I have held. And then the handle piece back here, now mine is what they call an ergo handle, so it's a little bit offset here, like it looks a little different. It's not straight across these two pieces of plastic. And that allows me a grip on his harness that feels more natural to me because it's kind of tilted a little bit and it's not as hard on my joints. I have rheumatoid arthritis and my joints don't manage that stuff very well. I have Figaro's booties hooked up here with the Velcro on the top of his handle, kind of right above the name plate that says Guide Dogs for the Blind. So two of his booties are almost always on his harness, unless we're going to like a formal event. I keep them on here in case we encounter an escalator. This handle for the harness is actually removable. That is really nice for things like traveling in a car, traveling in a bus, where your space gets a little constrained. You can just unclip the harness it is a little harder to clip back in just because, you know, blind. <laughs> but basically they're just like little pegs on each of the clips and you push the peg in, pull the handle out, push the peg in, pull the handle out, and then when you put it back in, you have to push the peg in as well and release it for it to lock in place. Push the peg in, oops, push the peg in, put the harness handle in, and then release the peg so that it locks in place. The nameplate is uh, reflective as well, so just a nice safety measure. These are Rough Wear Grip Tricks. These are Fig's issued booties. They're a set of four. I have two of them in my hands. I have two of them on his harness. He has these cool turquoise Grip Trex boots. These boots are for a couple of things. One, and actually this is like one of the most frequently asked questions we get as a team. There, people comment all the time, oh my gosh, look at the dog, he has shoes, he has little boots, oh, they're so cute. <laughs> we use two of the boots on the rear feet for any time that we encounter an escalator. He's been trained extensively for escalator work, so we place the two booties on the two rear feet, and that keeps his rear feet safe. Most dogs are really good about attending to their front paws, but not as good about attending to their rear paws. So we use the boots as a precaution anytime we do escalator work. I also use all four boots anytime we have inclement weather. Those are the booties. They're available through Roughwear, and Roughwear also has an extraordinary guide dog and service dog handler program. I forget what it's called at the moment, but I will link it down below in the description. It provides, I think, 40% off of your purchase if you're within the United States of America. I'll link that down below. There is an application process you have to go through in order to receive that discount but it's definitely worthwhile. Their products are awesome. They stand up to the test of time and the test of usage. Okay. Since we're talking about kind of basic guide dog or service dog gear, I just wanted to include here, like if somebody is a new team or if somebody's coming home for the first time with a new guide dog or service dog, obviously eating utensils are important. So these are just simple stainless steel. Ooh, I just got wet. There was water in there. That was that was awesome. These are actually from Target because, you know, Evie thinks we can get everything from Target. You can get these at Petco, you can get them on Amazon. I personally got them at Target. I don't remember how much they were. They're pretty inexpensive and they're readily available. This is a travel bowl that I use with Fig. This is silicone 
It's gray in color. It comes with a carabiner. I take this bowl pretty much everywhere. If I'm carrying and using my backpack, I will strap this with the carabiner, hook it onto my backpack, onto one of the straps in my backpack. I take this anytime we travel. I will take this with so that I can provide him opportunities to drink water throughout the day. If we're going to be somewhere past his dinner time, I will bring this as well as like a Ziploc or a Rubbermaid container with his meal in it. It's cool too because it's collapsible and I also have some collapsible measuring cups. Does this smell good? Probably smells like figs kibble. I just used it, didn't I? Ooh, <laughs> just stick her whole head in there. <laughs> All right, this is just a travel food bag. I have two of these. I have one that's like silicone or rubber. I don't know, it's waterproof. Um, and that one I got before they came out with this one. <laughs> it's bigger also, so I can take a number of meals with if we have a longer trip. This one is I don't know, kind of medium size, I guess. It's smaller than the other one that I have, and this is like a fabric. It's washable, I believe. This is from Target. I, I should try that washing thing out and see how it goes, because I've used this a few times. I've only just like dumped out the food back into his food bin. Nylon-y fabric on the outside. The inside is a bit thicker and so likely moisture resistant. What you do is you fill it up with however much food you need to take with. There is um, Velcro here at the top, but there it leaves a couple of holes on the edges and so you can push all the air out and then you're going to roll the top to wherever your food is and it says dog food on it, but the TSA doesn't care about that. Just so you know, I would recommend you take your food out of whatever bag you have as you go through TSA because they end up going through the whole thing to make sure that it's actually dog food <laughs> when you go through the metal detector. So you roll it up and then you have a little plastic clasp at the top and you also have another carabiner. Oh, who's is this? I know our school issues a fleece with us, with our dog, so that we can take that home and it smells like them because they've stayed in our room for two weeks. We have dog beds here at my house. I have a dog bed on my side of the bed and then my husband has a dog bed on his side of the bed. This was made by an incredible puppy raising friend. But this says his name, you guys, you guys. This is like soft fleece, like human blankets would be made out of. And the one side is black with neon colored sunglasses. Ah! Hello. And then his name is written in green, sewed into it. So it says Figaro. On the other side, it has these little patterns, and they're, again, like black background with neon colors and some white. Here's the extra awesome thing about this blanket. Our friend made this blanket for us. She is a puppy raiser for Guide Dogs for the Blind. She does so much already for Guide Dogs for the Blind and for, you know, people like me. And for her to even think about taking the time to make me something like this is so incredible. This blanket has these two straps. And what you do is, it's like a long rectangle. You take the two ends on the long side. I'm just gonna roll it out and see if you guys can see this. So you take, here's the blankie. Blankie, <laughs> you can tell I have little kids. You fold in one side on the long direction. You fold in the other side on the long direction. And then, you're now basically in the middle, you fold it up, or down, whatever your direction is, and you've got the two handles now in the middle, and your blanket is basically a square or a small rectangle, and it's a travel blanket. <laughs> it's amazing. I take this thing everywhere, especially if we know that Fig is going to have to sit on a floor or lay down on a floor, like in a movie theater, where you kind of know that the floor is going to be... A little yucky, <laughs> like a little grimy. Like I wouldn't want to sit on on the floor in a movie theater. It's probably a little bit yucky. If I can get a link, I will leave it down in the description box below for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If any of you are soon to be guide dog or service dog handlers, 
I would love it if you would leave a comment below and let us know that. Super excited for you if you are beginning the journey with a guide or service dog. If you have any questions about the basic gear and things that I showed today, please leave them down below in the comments and I'll be glad to get back to you as soon as I can. I will try to link all of the products below in the description box. I will also leave a link for Guide Dogs for the Blind, which is the organization that I received Figaro through as well as Picasa and Megan, my previous guide dogs. Thanks for staying all the way through to the end of this video. If you liked our video, please click that thumbs up, like button. And if you enjoy our content, please subscribe and join us on this journey. Thanks so much, you guys. See you next time. Join us on our social links on Facebook at Chronicles of a Crafty Blind Chick and for Figaro's adventures, This Guide's Life. And on Instagram at Crafty Blind Chick.